Hi everyone, so welcome to one more fantastic 5 MCQ discussion. Myself, Dr. Bharat. This is for NEET PG and FMG. Now, question is which of the following is growth hormone receptor antagonist used in acromegaly? So, try to answer this question. Now, if you are telling pregvisomine, then you are right. You may be confusing with octreotide. Let me tell you the answer. Now, pegvisomand, read the name, SOM means growth hormone antagonist. So, they are asking growth hormone receptor antagonist, the name is pegvisomand. Now, it has VI in the name. Remember, it can cause vision impairment. Vision gets impaired. And adding peg, the drug becomes longer acting. So, it is a growth hormone receptor antagonist. Even we can use octreotide in acromegaly, but... They are asking specifically growth hormone receptor antagonist. Mecha mercin, there is nothing like mecha mercin, there is something called mecha, mecha, just a minute, mecha sermin. Now, mecha sermin is a recombinant engine like growth factor 1. It's a recombinant form. Where do we use it? We use it if there is insulin like growth factor 1 deficiency. Point number one. Point number two, it is used if there is growth hormone receptor mutation or it has become resistant, then we use mecasermin. So what is it? It's a growth hormone, I mean it's an insulin like growth factor one recombinant drug. We reduce it, insulin like growth factor one deficiency and growth hormone receptor mutation. So what is G point? Any drug ending with G point, these are CGRP antagonist. They are used for migraine. They are useful in migraine, particularly fibrogepant is used in acute attack of migraine. So, what we will understand from this MCQ question is drugs for acromegaly. Three type of, I mean type of drugs are used: growth hormone receptor antagonist, then dopamine two agonist, and somatostatin analog. The growth hormone receptor antagonist, just now I told you the name is called pegvisomine. Now you have to tell me a drug used in angina which can cause vision impairment. Tell me a drug used in angina pectoris which can cause vision impairment. The D2 agonist drugs are the name called as bromocryptin. And one more drug starting with caber, it is cabergolin. And the somatostatin analog is octreotide. So we have octreotide, leandriotide, then pastreotide. So these are somatostatin analogs used for acromegaly. So let us move on to the second MCQ. A boy presented to the emergency with vomiting. Parents gave history of consuming 8 tablets of ferrous sulfate. So what is this? It's a case of iron overdose or iron poisoning. Iron poisoning. So they're asking what is the antidote for iron for treatment of this patient? It's easy to identify. The name is desferioxamine. Desferioxamine is also called by another name. Deferi. Deferioxamine. So both are same only. These are iron chelators and you can give them either IM or IV for iron overdose. So all this penicillamine, British anti site, they are also called as chelating agents. But they are not for iron poisoning. Remember, BAL, British anti site, is absolutely contraindicated in iron and cadmium poisoning now why they are not given in iron and cadmium because the complex of iron and ball iron and cadmium itself is toxic to the body and we know that activated charcoal is a universal antidote it will absorb the poison and prevent its absorption so the answer is desferioxamine or deferioxamine and suppose there is chronic iron overload what to be given let me discuss next so iron poisoning can be two types, acute iron poisoning or chronic iron poisoning. 
you see chronic iron poisoning particularly in patients with thalassemia we, who require repeated blood transfusions so hemolysis can happen so cirrhosis can happen iron overload acute poisoning we use the drug called d for remember the name start with d for remove the iron d for oxamine also called as desferoxamine chronic you can give defer e cirrox or deferi prone so please understand all these iron chelators they start with defer 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 how do i know for emergency if they end with amine that is for acute iron poisoning if they don't end then they are for chronic iron poisoning please remember like that for copper poisoning we use penicillamine not only we use penicillamine for copper poisoning we use it in wilson's disease earlier it was used for rheumatoid arthritis lead poisoning we use calcium disodium edta so this is the used or a older drug called succimer succimer is also called as dimercapto uric acid so dimercapto succinic acid it is used for lead poisoning so iron is asked lead is frequently asked and copper most of you know so lead we can give calcium disodium edta or succimer okay also called as dimercapto succinic acid so this is iron chelators and chelating agents coming to the third mcq patient was put on digoxin for chronic chf with atrial fibrillation he now present to the opd with pulse rate of 50 and ecg shows third degree av block which of the following is the best step now remember when we give digoxin digoxin causes common side effect gat upset that is nausea vomiting diarrhea that is a common sometimes it can cause yellow vision that is very rare and also it can cause gynecomastia that is also a rare issue but when the digoxin levels are high it's an aerotherapeutic index drug it can lead to arrhythmias the most specific arrhythmia what we see with digoxin is atrial tachycardia with av block so if you see here since there is third degree av block the heart rate is 50 so it is typical of digoxin toxicity so digoxin toxicity the antidote what i prefer next is digipine so digipine is also called by another name digifab or also called as digoxin immune fab immune fab so even the drug is outdated the question keeps on coming in every neat pgfmg exams never do dc cardioversion in case of digoxin toxicity lignocaine is used if patient has digoxin overdose and develops ventricular tachycardia beta blockers are used if patients on digoxin develop supraventricular tachycardia so this question was asked in fmg right so that is about digoxin very very important drug let me repeat again digoxin the most specific is a tachycardia with av block you can see the heart block suspect digoxin toxicity then give digibind digifab or digoxin fab same suppose digoxin induced vt then lidocaine is the drug of choice svt beta blocker are the drug of choice so moving on to the fourth mcq mdr tuberculosis is defined when the mycobacterium is resistant to mdr tb means if it is resistant to i isoniazid and rifampicin that is h and r then we call it as mdr tb so let me tell you mdr stands for multiple multi-drug resistant tb so if there is h and r resistance then mdr tb free xdr means h and r plus one fluoroquinolone so either it can be for moxifloxacin or it can be levofloxacin what is xdr so same pre xdr tb plus any one either bedaquilin or linezolid or both 
so if there is resistance for either bradycholine lenzolid or both then it is called extensive drug resistant tuberculosis so this is the definition of xdr tb now there is a regimen that has been proposed for drug resistant tb that is called b pol m now b pol m regimen is mainly for bradycholine pretomanid then linezolid and oxifloxacin so all these are oral drugs and they can be completed within six months so this is the new regimen for drug resistant tuberculosis b pol m regimen right so the last question fifth mcq a deep vein thrombosis patient was started on an anticoagulant therapy next day patient presented with the feature shown in the image which of the following drug is implicated for the adverse effect so let me show the image so you can see the skin has become red black necrosed so this is called dermal necrosis or skin necrosis this is seen if you start warfarin for deep vein thrombosis this is seen now why this happens with warfarin let us find out now we all know warfarin is an anticoagulant used for dvt it is a vitamin k antagonist so it blocks vitamin k so that means it reduces vitamin k dependent factors what are the factors they are 2 7 9 10 they are these are for clotting there are protein c and s which are there for stop the clot so they are in balance these are trying to clot these are trying to stop the clot so when i give warfarin the first one to disappear is 7 7 then protein c then factor 9 protein s yes, then 2 and then 2 10 and 2 so when i start warfarin why the first one to disappear is 7 because half life is very short then c is lost then 9 then protein s yes. so when we lose protein c and s yes, there is nobody to stop the clot formation so there is 10 and 2 remaining they will form the clot particularly at the skin surface that will lead to skin necrosis also called as dermal necrosis sir can we stop this yes you can stop it how so whenever you start a patient on dvt treatment you have to start with heparin or low molecular weight heparin plus warfarin so if i start like this even though i give warfarin heparin low molecular weight heparin will not allow 10 to and 2 to work and they don't allow the clot to form there is no risk of skin necrosis so what we do is we give heparin or low molecular weight heparin for five to seven days and then stop it and then we continue warfarin so we start them together then continue warfarin to avoid skin necrosis this is called heparin bridging heparin bridging so this is what we do in practice coming to our adverse effect of warfarin warfarin main problem is bleeding so that is why we monitor inr normal should be 2 to 3 in case of prosthetic heart valve it can be up to 2.5 to 3.5 what is the antidote if there is bleeding the antidote is vitamin k even though we have antidote vitamin k suppose patient comes with bleeding vitamin cannot k cannot work immediately so suppose we give warfarin and patient has bleeding episode then we use four factor prothrombin complex to stop bleeding now this contain all the clotting factors like 2 7 9 10 and protein c and s now don't give this in first trimester of pregnancy it can cause teratogenicity particularly it can cause a bone problem nasal bone hyperplasia then steeple diffyphysis so if they give nose nasal defect i mean a depressed nose and a skeletal abnormality it is due to warfarin skin necrosis i have explained and it can also cause purple toe syndrome very rare adverse effect this is due to mobilization of cholesterol emboli so this is the adverse effect of warfarin i have told you what to monitor what is the antidote and what to do when there is bleeding and where to avoid this and why skin necrosis and how to avoid this so that is about fantastic five mcqs for you all so any doubt you can ask me in the comment section thank you all